Welcome to this introduction of the simulation and design software RP Resonator. I am Rüdiger Paschotta, the founder of RP Photonics and the developer of this software. I will now give you a quick overview on how to use that powerful, handy and flexible tool. Let us start with one of the demo files coming with the software, which calculates the mode properties of a bow tie ring resonator. I have already loaded it. It is quite obvious how to use it. Just fill out the white input fields defining the length of the resonator arms, the curvature radii and some details of the laser crystal. Then we can execute the calculation and we obtain three graphical diagrams. The first one shows the resonator setup. The second diagram shows how the beam radius evolves within the resonator and the positions of the optical elements are also indicated. The third diagram shows how the beam radius in the crystal depends on the dioptric power of the thermal lens in the laser crystal. In addition we see the calculated length of the upper resonator arm in the form. Note that fields with a grey background are output fields. Besides, we get some numerical outputs in the output area on the right side. Some are just input parameters, while others are calculated for the resonator, in particular the mode radius at three different positions in the resonator. There are various demo files of this type, which you can simply use straight away. And now I want to show you something very important, how such forms are made. They are not hard-coded, but rather implemented with scripts, that is, with text files containing certain commands and also definition of the form. I show you that for the previous example. We just go to Editor's mode to see the script on which the simulation is based. Now you can see how that simulation was set up. In the beginning, the form is defined the sequences of hash characters mark the positions of the input and output fields and for each field in the following line there is a command like input which tells which variable is edited there, with how many valid digits and with what units it is displayed and in some cases also what is the maximum and minimum allowed value. In this particular case the script also loads an image file to show the resonator drawing as the background. Later on, you find the definition of the resonator. You see that for every optical component there is a line beginning with an asterisk, followed by the type of component, for example mirror, optionally its name in parentheses, for example M3 for the third mirror, and a number of parameters defining its properties. Importantly, the parameters of an optical component do not need to be specified as numerical values. Instead, you can enter any mathematical expression. In the simplest cases, just refer to a previously defined variable value, which is related, for example, to an input field. You can also have certain parameters calculated from other values. Once the resonator is defined, we can use certain predefined functions for accessing resonator properties. For example, here you see the function w, which calculates the fundamental mode radius at a certain position in the resonator and for a certain wavelength. This function is called within a show command which displays the calculated values in the output area on the right side when we execute the calculation. Finally, the script contains some code for defining diagrams. The first one, showing the resonator setup, is obtained very easily. Essentially, you just use the command draw resonator, often with some parameters in order to obtain a heading, indicate the focus positions, modify the scaling, etc. The second diagram showing how the beam radius evolves within the resonator requires a little more code, 
for defining the axis ranges, plotting the beam radius as the blue line and creating the additional labels. Similarly, the third diagram produces a graph showing the dependence of the beam radius on the dioptric power of the crystal. For each horizontal position in the diagram, we set the dioptric power to that value, recalculate the resonator, and then we take the resulting beam radius as the vertical coordinate. The software comes with various demo scripts. Now it is important to realize that you may not only use them just as they are, but you may also make modified versions of them. For example, you may need another diagram, and for that you would just have to add a little more code to the script. Also, you can of course make complete new scripts if you need to do substantially different calculations, simulations and optimizations. So you see that with this software you do not only get a couple of handy tools for doing specific calculations, you can also modify those tools according to your needs or even produce other tools yourself and they can be completely tailored to your needs, both concerning the look of the form and the done calculations. And you can also get such things produced within the technical support, that means by myself. By the way, some of the simpler demo scripts do not contain the definition of a form. Instead, the input values are simply entered in the script. As an example, I show you such a version for the ring resonator. In the beginning of the script, instead of the form definition, you simply see a few assignments of parameters to variables. You may also make your own scripts that way, saving a little time to design the form. However, apart from the nicer handling of a form, another interesting aspect of the forms is that you can save a complete set of input values in a file so that you can maintain different parameter sets and easily switch between them. A further remark on using custom forms. In the input fields, you can simply enter numerical values. Appropriate units are then automatically added. However, you can then also enter a mathematical expression in parentheses. For example, I have entered R1 as the input for the field R2, so that I always automatically get the same radius of curvature for these two mirrors. Similarly, you could easily achieve that a certain arm length is always twice some other arm length, for example. I would also like to show you another simple demo file, which is not for a resonator but for single pass propagation. You can conveniently calculate the focusing of a laser beam, again with a custom form. One can enter a wavelength, the initial beam radius and the beam quality factor m squared. In a second tab, one can enter the details of the optical setup, that is the focal length of the two lenses and their positions. If I execute the calculation, two diagrams are generated. The first one shows the optical setup and also the focus positions. The second diagram shows the beam radius versus position once the fundamental beam radius and once the actual beam radius, which is larger if the m-square factor is larger than 1. You also get some numerical displays in the diagram, so that you can see, for example, where exactly the beam focus is and what the beam radius at that position is. Further, in the form itself, you see some calculated outputs in the gray fields. In addition to the outputs in the output area on the right side, and also a visualization of the beam path which can serve for a quick sanity check of your inputs. We have another demo file for a linear laser resonator.
Here you can simply define the mirror curvatures and in a second tap the resonator arms. Each arm may also contain some crystal, for example a laser crystal or a nonlinear crystal with a certain length, refractive index, dioptric power, angle of incidence, etc. Also one can select certain graphical diagrams. If I execute that, we again obtain some diagrams and the beam evolution is also shown in the form itself. In many cases you may analyze a resonator just using this provided demo script, but again one could easily extend it, for example if you need additional diagrams. Another demo script deals with a multipass amplifier. One can enter some geometrical parameters, properties of the amplifier crystal and some operation parameters. I execute the calculation and we again obtain some diagrams. A remarkable detail of that script is that the number of passes through the amplifier crystal is variable. You can simply enter that in the form of course, that implies that the number of mirrors and arms are also variable. Let me quickly show you how that is handled in the script. We go to Editor's mode and I have already moved to that portion of the script. The optical elements are defined within a loop. There is one set of elements for each pass through the amplifier crystal. There are parameters, namely the angles of incidence on the mirrors and the arm length, are calculated from the input parameters using some trigonometric relations. Such a thing is initially a bit tricky to set up, but obviously it is extremely convenient that then you can, for example, change the number of passes or the angular spacing and all the relevant parameters are automatically recalculated. A final example concerns a resonator with automatic optimization. In this case, this script does not contain a form. It contains only preliminary values for the resonator arm length and also their allowed ranges. After the resonator definition, I have defined a figure of merit function. that essentially tells the software what exactly I want from the resonator. It is made such that if the resonator would ideally fulfill all requirements, it would return zero. For any deviations from that ideal performance, it adds up certain penalties. Such penalties are based on deviations from wanted mode radii and the total resonator length. We can then use the command vary which in our case varies the three arm lengths of the resonator such as to obtain the minimum possible value of the figure of merit function. So this automatically optimizes the resonator for us. After that, as usual, the script will display various things in the output area with the show commands. For example, the optimum arm length and the resulting mode radius at various positions in the resonator and it also makes some diagrams. If I execute that, we get the optimization done within a second or so and the results are displayed. Okay, so you have now seen first of all that it is very easy to analyze certain types of laser resonators using the delivered demo files. Second, it is very important to realize that you can modify all those demo files as needed to adapt them to your specific needs. It is no problem, for example, to add further graphical diagrams or to somewhat modify the resonator layout. Because the used script language is extremely powerful, it is even possible to implement most sophisticated resonator models. For example, one could perform sophisticated statistical processing of results 
for analyzing tolerances. I just want to briefly mention some other capabilities of RP Resonator. Resonators or single pass optics can contain different types of optical elements, not only including mirrors and lenses, but also prisms, even with curved input and output surfaces. They can also contain Gaussian apertures and diffraction gratings. In case of prisms and diffraction gratings, the beam path may actually become wavelength dependent. That can also be calculated. Optical elements may be misaligned, and the software can then calculate how exactly the beam path deviates from the nominal beam path. Of course, the alignment sensitivity of a resonator can also be used as a criterion for optimization. The software cannot only calculate the mode radius anywhere inside or outside the resonator, of course separately for tangential and sagittal direction in case of astigmatism, but also various other quantities, for example the distance to the next beam focus, the radius of curvature of the wave fronts, and the sensitivity of the beam radius to thermal lensing. Such features give you enormous flexibility to implement even the most sophisticated calculations. By the way, don't be afraid that it could be too difficult to produce such scripts. You will obtain my personal technical support, and I am prepared not only to fix some details of a script, for example, which is not properly working, but also to provide complete scripts according to your description what you need for your project. In case that this takes more time than the number of support hours included in the license fee, you can simply purchase additional support hours. In some cases you may convince me to make a new demo script for all users, and you will be the first to obtain it, without getting any of your support time used up. Besides, the software itself offers a lot of features which are designed to support you in your script development. Some examples for that. Scripts are made more readable by syntax highlighting. For example, known commands and standard functions are indicated with blue color. If you click on the parameter list of a function, you obtain parameter help, reminding you of the number and the meaning of the required parameters. If you click on the name of such a function and press F2, you easily get to the page in the interactive help system, which explains the function in detail. In addition, there is a detailed manual. Scripts can be made more readable by automatically reformatting them according to standard rules. There are wizard forms where you can enter parameters into predefined fields in order to obtain the corresponding script code, for example, for the definition of a resonator. There is also a code snippets library where you can find frequently used bits of code for various purposes. So you see that this software is really nice to use so that you can quickly concentrate on the actual scientific and technical issues of your work.